Whew, that was quite an intermission. Good to be back with everyone. Technical difficulties as always with Facebook Live. So I think everyone was so excited about the drinks. Someone was calling to book a trip I just because they shut, wanted. I blew the internet, or what do they call it? Broke the internet. With Broke the, the internet. Okay. So Tamara, cocktails. And that was a tough one because I you, I usually drink whatever is local, and that is all over the place. Everything from shots to lots of wine, lots lots of wine. But if I go to if I if I have a menu and I you know there's nothing in particular to jump out. I love an Aperol spritz. You do. I do. That's oh, I love Aperol spritz. Isn't there bitters in there? No. Oh. Mm -mm. And um, they're kind of universal now. Like you can yeah. find them here, but you know they're really they're really from Italy, but you can find them all over Europe. So that's my go-to. Uh, I like to taste test little things too. So a lot of the cruise cruises now have a, like mixology courses, or they'll do like flights and stuff like that. And I've really found. It, there's always an upcharge, of course, um, mm -hmm. but I, I really do enjoy those experiences. Um, whether it's the mixology class where you're at a bar, where the you know it's, the bar's pretty much closed, you're with one of their lead bartenders, they're kind of showing you these different course to, uh, drinks and how to mix them. A lot of cruise lines do that now. And these flights that a lot of them have too, whether it's beer or even martini flights, which I don't even like martinis, but it's very good. Mm -hmm. So I like those different experiences, the, the live experience, but then also the different taste testing too, so. Lots of good information for cocktails. Let's go on to the next course of the meal. We're talking about appetizers. Mm -hmm. Tamara, what do you want to talk about? So I have I a picked, hunch I know what you're going to go. I picked my favorite place for appetizers, which can actually become a meal. That's tapas. I knew you were going to say yeah. that. <laughs> really, tapas are just amazing little bites. They're basically Spain, but you can find them in Portugal as well. And Puerto Rico actually has them too. Um, they, they may be called different aperitivos in Italy, but um, they're really just little bite-sized creations that you just kind of gnash on and a lot of time like especially in Spain it becomes your meal and in Spain in particular they've really taken tapas to a, the next level so there's competitions with um tapa creation uh you can even go to a restaurant that's just nothing but tapas I we went to one when I was there last time and I posted stuff about it but it was like eight courses and the first course was a cigar it was like a, it looked mm. like a cigar and an ashtray there's actually ash and it was like uh, a flaky, it was, you could eat all of it, including the wrapper. So it was like, um, like a flaky dough that inside of it was some sort of fish thing, which I don't like fish, but it was delicious. And the ash was ground sesame and so cool. But every course was like a new adventure. They came out with a candelabra and the candles were edible. Oh and they had like a little corn tortilla wick <laughs> that they lit and we, then we ate the candles. So cool. So, love tapas. You didn't bring me back a cigar. I'm a little disappointed. Yeah. That it fish, wouldn't, the it fish would not have made it. Let's go. It was in uh, Valladolid. That does that sound mean, good, though. Town. Yeah. Really cool. Chrissy, appetizers? I think like? I missed that section on the, um, on the agenda. agenda. Well, but I mean, you can't beat fresh guacamole. <laughs> so, there's my... I mean, I think it's... All inclusive for an appetizer is kind of different. I mean, a lot of places have food trucks now, which is kind of oh, cool. Yeah. So you could get um, some tacos and, and and little bites throughout the afternoon before you would have your meal. So that would probably be wonderful. I went on tapas too because yeah. you know they all the cruise lines have regular appetizers too, and yeah. they're nothing too exciting. But there's three cruise line restaurants that I want to feature that have the tapas. Okay. The first one is Pincho, which is the tapas bar and a Norwegian cruise line. Very popular. Um, I have not tried it, but it gets very well, good reviews. People love it. Okay, the menu looks great. Windstar Quadro 44 is all tapas. And again, it's like it's a meal, like Tamara said. Oh, they just kept bringing food. It was so good. So many different things. Things like I, there was vegetables like I, that they tricked me into eating. And it was very, very good. Um, loved it. And then we mentioned it early, technically, uh, Pink Agave is a tapas restaurant. So oh, nice. uh, the first nice. two things are all shareables that they call tapas. And I think they even technically will say that main is tapas. To, it's not really. That no. steak is not tapas. But the, the first few courses, are, you know, theirs, yeah. it's tapas. So very, very good there. So let's go into the main courses. Okay. What do you want to share? What are your favorites? What are you thinking? Me? My sure. Favorite? Okay, Jamaica, of course, jerk chicken. Ooh, okay. So when I went to Jamaica for my family, we had um, uh, some meals that were put on for us that were amazing, authentic, delicious uh, jerk chicken. Um, there's some curry. They eat goat. I don't know. Goat. I Goat's just, good. Uh, mm -hmm. Cute. 
furry animals I'm not a fan of, except cows. I know this is a whole other story. But anyways, um, yeah, so they also have this interesting thing that I know I mentioned one time, but I forgot the name. It's called Festival. That's what they call it. And all it is is a, a ball of sweet dough that's deep fried. Mm. And you, they have that to kind of, you have it with the meat. It's, you know, something else mm. with it. Delicious. Mm. Um, sweet and salty. Yes, very good. Aruba, uh, the Dutch influence in Aruba, Dutch pancakes. Those are very popular in Aruba. Those are, they can be savory or sweet. They're similar to a mm. crepe. Um, lines out the door at the Dutch pancake places in Aruba. Are those ones that puff way up? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. They're real thin like a crepe. Okay. Um, let's see. So those, yeah, those are my two things. And of course, you know, main courses at um, All Inclusives, you have your buffet, which is, there's some people who really like the buffet because you can still get chicken fingers if you have kids. Um, but then they have many a la carte restaurants. And the funny thing is the a la carte restaurants, you know, you'll have one that's um, based on the country you're in usually, but a lot of them are Italian. There'll be an Italian, there'll be a steakhouse, there'll be Asians. A lot of times there's a hibachi. So there's a lot of different um, things to choose from. All righty, Tamara. So in Europe, when you go to a restaurant and are given a menu, you're going to see like first course, second course, third course, and you know, whatever language it is. So um, it's sometimes kind of difficult to order in Europe because you're like, well, I don't really want all three courses mm -hmm. and I want two from this course and one from this course. Just know you don't have to order one thing from each um, section. Uh, I had to learn that one the hard way because like there's, there's going to be a fixed price if you want to do like one from each section, but you can just order a la carte from each section too. So Italy's big on that. Yes. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, but other countries are big on that as well. Because um, you have the pasta dish, I'm usually full after it, yeah. and the lady pasta, the pasta, then they want to serve you meat, and then another course, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't, right, the pasta alone was, yeah, so in France in particular, though, they have a plat du jour, plate of the day, and that's usually uh, three courses, now that can really be um, a really good uh, deal, and the food is usually delicious, and I, I usually, if I like the plat du jour, I'll order that plat du jour, but, so my first course favorite thing is French related, and that would be my oh gosh, one of my favorite meals, quiche Lorraine mm. with this little salad, like just a simple <laughs> green salad <laughs> with like a balsamic. <laughs> to me, that's like perfect. And to me, it's a perfect lunch. But I made it my first course for this little exercise today. Not an omelet mm. du fromage. No, there's fromage <laughs> and the quiche Lorraine. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Yeah. What about your second course then? Are we going? To We're going to kind of marry chicken. them together in a little bit. My second course would be come from Thailand, and that is something called khao soy, which uh, is like a chicken. Okay, so it's like a curry coconut broth, kind of creamy, with uh, chicken and all sorts of spices and some vegetables. To me, it is per a perfect meal because it, it's like. The perfect blend of spices. I really enjoy chicken. It, you know, vegetables keep you healthy. It, it tastes like Thailand. And when I was in Thailand, I couldn't get enough of it. My my guide started learning that I like cow soy. So he, uh, <laughs> he took me to the best places for cow soy. I've never heard of that. Yeah. You can buy, a like, there's a jar of cow soy, like, base at Meyer here. And every once in a while, I'll buy it. And it's kind of expensive. It's like $9 for a small jar. But super good. Mm. Really, I really, really love it. So that, that would be my second course, which has nothing to do with my first course from France. But Thai food is super, super good. I like all the depth of flavors in Thai food. Yes. So many layers. So many layers. So. Um, I would have to say I look for any kind of pasta. Like, you know, so if I'm on a ship, if they say homemade pasta, check me in. Or if it says truffle, check me in. I'm looking for those kind of dishes. I mean, once you get homemade pasta, like... After my first time in Italy, I said, I don't know if I can ever have that box stuff again. It's just <laughs> such a world of difference. So when they're making it fresh, and some some ships will even have where you can watch them make it fresh, like the old days in Olive Garden. Remember mm -hmm. Olive Garden used to have that? Uh, oh, so good, so good. You have to have like super strong arms to make that pasta. I there's a yeah there's a Facebook page called Pasta Grannies. You ever watch it? <laughs> Love Pasta Grannies, and it's these old ladies, older ladies in Italy, just making doing their pasta mm. thing. They got some muscles. 
I, once you've had the real stuff, uh, you're making mm -hmm. it. That's hungry. All right. Uh, and then a lobster. I like lobster. Mm. So on most cruise ships, even like the contemporary resort style, you can get the one of the nights they'll have lobster tail in the uh, in the main dining room. You used to be able to get unlimited, but most of them it's just one tail now. Uh, I used to get like six or seven. It used to get oh dangerous. My gosh. Uh, so good. Six um, or seven. Well, I don't eat the vegetables with it on the plate. I tell them, don't bring me the potatoes or rice and vegetables. Just bring me the tail. Bring me tail. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's oh so good. But they've, you know, cut back on that. So I, I look for the lobster. Uh, <laughs> someone abused it. I don't know. <laughs> or like if there's dishes that have lobster, like on a cruise ship, um, there was this one. It was an Eden on a celebrity. And it was like a lobster pasta with corn and a cream. Oh, so good. Mm. So lobster, I'm looking for, for, for that. Mm. Okay. Okay. Any other food dishes before okay. we jump into dessert, ladies? Oh, I could go on and on. Like, there's so many good ones. <laughs> My mouth is watering. Yeah. Let me let me mention something very unique that I saw. I think I showed you guys a picture in uh, uh, the Amalfi Coast. In Amalfi, we we found this little deli that made a mozzarella burger, and uh, it was big giant slabs of fresh mozzarella. Mm. That was your mm. bun. Oh and my gosh. then inside was like tomato and basil and balsamic. Oh, and, that sounds uh, they, wonderful. Is that they, a touristy thing though? You think or is it the locals eat it? Probably touristy because that's a very touristy area. But of course we got one and we took pictures. Oh, we really didn't eat it, um, but we gave it away to... You didn't try it? No, we didn't eat it because we had just eaten lunch. And then we saw that we're like, oh. this is making us pictures. <laughs> but we don't want to eat it. It was kind of pricey. It was like 20 bucks. But a couple of us split it so we could take pictures of it. I've got pictures I'll show you. Mm. It's something different, unique, and I like to find those things where I'm going. So you're right, it probably is touristy, but you know. I'd still like to try it in Rome. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Oh, the, gosh, the cheese. Cheese is around the world. <laughs> we could do a whole yeah, week I just on that. Cheese. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's 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 go to dessert. Some people's favorite courses. Chrissy, you got anything on dessert? Um, yes. Yeah. So in Jamaica, we uh, there's a lot of coconut dishes for desserts. That's very popular. Rum cake and sweet potato pudding. Yes, Ooh. very good. Um, Aruba is known for their creme caramel, which is like a custard, um, which is very good as well. And probably one of my favorites in Mexico is the churros. And the um, resort that we're going to at the end of April it has a churro cart. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Do gosh. they have hot chocolate and with they're it? Warm. No, that's your thing. Yeah. Um, and then, I'm right, I got to pronounce something. Uh oh. <laughs> Arroz con leche, rice. which is rice pudding. So uh, that's really popular too, as well. And delicious. I never could get into rice pudding. I oh, like I love rice it. pudding with some cinnamon. Oh, mm -hmm. so good. Oh, yeah. I don't like it either. No, maybe it was creme brulee. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. do that. Which isn't even close, but. Uh, all right, Tamara. I know you got some good desserts from yeah, around the I've world. Yeah, I've had some amazing. Des <laughs> I have had just amazing desserts from around the world, but um, I really like after dinner walking around the town in the evening, and especially in Lisbon, Portugal. When I can get oh. my absolute favorite thing in the whole world, pastel de nata, which are little tiny egg tarts that are sweet. And when you have them warm right from the bakery, mm. oh, there's nothing like it. I thought that was like a morning thing more. What did I, I don't eat them all day long. <laughs> I like at night, like just, you can, they're tiny. You can get tiny ones so you can just kind of eat your way around tasting them. Like desserts and bakery items in Europe in particular, there, there's no comparison to here. They are amazing. I'm going to Vienna in a couple months, and they have a whole coffee or cafe culture where, like, the v the Viennese desserts are just out of this world. Can't can't wait to taste some. I'll show you. I'll bring you pictures. Maybe I'll bring you something back. I also enjoy macarons from mm -hmm. France. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those are those are really good. They don't travel well back here, and some of the touristy places like lottery. Uh, not not that great. Um, there, if you find like a local bakery that makes them, mm, they're so good. So, two of my faves. Uh, wonderful. You know the cruises they have their standard desserts, but then every cruise line kind of has their specialty, and some are known for more. So I just I pulled a couple that are really they're they're famous. The Disney have, have you been on Disney cruise? Mm -mm. Disney's known for this quantum cupcake, and I guess this is like the big dessert, most popular thing on a Disney cruise line. Okay. Norwegian has these decadent brownie s'more desserts. I'm not into s'more. Are you guys into s'mores? Mm -hmm. I'm not. I don't know. Regent, very excited to try this. This is all over the caramel popcorn sundae. 
I would never get a Sunday, but I saw a video that someone reviewed of them putting it together. And it, I think I got to do, oh, I got to get a video lovely. of it. Uh, so that's like formal desserts. You know, Princess has their, what is it, flourless cake. Carnival has Carnival's their lava like cake. Yeah. Yeah, everyone has their like kind of key thing. Some people just want a little ice cream. They want to walk mm -hmm. around with a little ice cream. So uh, a lot of cruise lines have little gelato stain, yeah. stands. Uh, you love the uh, Virgin Voyages. Lick me till ice cream stand and uh very good there uh, dangerous as well um a lot of cruise lines will still have the ice cream machines you know very dangerous kids love those yes yeah. very dangerous and then um some people like a savory dessert so i always point out the uh, bacon well that would be good if they offered that I would... have you ever ordered that for, for dessert i would not put it past you I would eat bacon any time of the yeah. day. Yeah. If we got to breakfast, the three of us sometimes, Michael gets bacon as an appetizer as soon as we sit down. It's very Crispy good. Bacon. Got to yeah. support the economy. So, uh, and he doesn't share either. No, so, he doesn't. Late night, I, I sometimes don't mind a little pizza for dessert, believe it or not. So, a lot of the cruise lines have these late night pizza, or taco places, or grab and go, or room service. So, there's all kinds of desserts. Yeah. You know? No lack for no. food. No, 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 no. no. Okay. All over the world. Yeah. Any other food items? I think we're gonna have to save these celebrations for next time. Yeah, I could go on and on about food, but you know, food is a very important part of travel, in my opinion. Amen yeah. to that, sister. All right, good. So let's pivot. Um, any interesting uh, news or bookings in your niches? I just have I have a bunch of spring breakers taken off here in a couple of weeks, so I've been working really hard on that, getting them ready and prepared and finalizing all that. Um, and yeah, I booked somebody, uh, last week. I'm not going to say the name because you guys make fun of the way I pronounce it. Isla Morada. I was calling oh! <laughs> Last week I called it Isla Morada. Yes, that was me. That is not a joke. Um, so yeah, so they're going to have a really nice trip to stay at a really pretty resort. So yeah. All right. Just plug it away. Tamara? I just am booking everywhere. I've got a lot going on. Working on a couple for Germany right now. You know, we had Germany week last week, and I really am a fan of Germany. So I'm, in, I'm enjoying those. But, you know, I got stuff all over the place. And it's been fun. <clears throat> Wonderful. <coughs> uh, for me, continuing booking into groups. Got a number of groups working on. And then booked a couple of carnival crews for a family yesterday. So... Obviously, travel is a wonderful opportunity for families, multi-generational. This, this family was celebrating a 50th wedding anniversary. So nice. got some great. grandparents, parents, and kiddos. So they're older kids. But uh, great, great way to travel with family. Good. And then uh, groups, groups. Tamara, you want to share anything with your groups? Uh, I think we're, uh, the Germany trip is, uh, we still have plenty of availability. We'd love to have you join us. We're having a meeting or an informational session the March 20th at Mita here in Sandusky. If you'd like to join us, give us a call, send us a text. We'd love, we'd love to see you there. Yeah, there'll be little treats, I think, too. Yeah, and, yeah. And opportunity to see some pictures, learn yeah. about the trip. So I think that's going to be fun. Yep. Uh, booking into Hawaii and Alaska. That's what I've got in a couple private groups, too. So uh, obviously, travel is a great thing for groups. So if you have a group, thinking about it, uh, let us know about that. Yeah. That's all I have, ladies. I don't, it's probably lunchtime now yeah, because of all this food talk. Yeah. <laughs> Even for me. <laughs> well, we'll all throw out our diets for lunch today. So, <laughs> so we want to thank everyone for watching our two-part episode of Food Week here at Travel Talk Tuesday. If any of these trips sound good or any of these ideas sound like something for you or you want to plan a whole trip with great food, you want to contact us and we will take great care of you. Yeah. So thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.